Okay, students, we're going to be, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to be doing lesson 1.6, constructing lines and angles. The objective is for you, the student, to be able to construct congruent line segments, congruent angles, and congruent segment bisectors. What you'll need for today is a compass and a protractor, so grab that out of your little supplies box. Now, good news, we're not going to be doing a lot of, like, mathy math, not a lot of X and Ys, not a lot of numbers. We're just going to be drawing some uh, basic geometric figures. So, first thing we're going to do is construct a congruent line segment. Now, given this line segment, AB, we want to construct another line segment that's congruent to it. Now, all the steps are right here. You just got to follow along. So, the first thing you have to do is draw a ray with an endpoint C. All right? And does it matter that we call it C? Nope. And does it matter how long your ray is? Well, it should be bigger than this. Okay? It should be bigger than AB's. AB. So, just draw a big ray. Two, we're going to open our compass, 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 to the length of AB, like so. Now don't draw anything yet, we're just going to lift it up and move it over here, putting this part, that metal part, on the endpoint C. Now from here we're going to draw an arc that intersects the ray, okay? We're just going to draw this arc like this, intersecting the ray, and this point of intersection, we'll just call this point D, all right, where these two intersect. Now, does this make sense that AB is congruent to CD? Yeah, why? Because look, this is the same length, right? We know, we know that this compass is the same length here, and it's the same length here. So these two line segments have to be the same. So to write a quick congruence statement, I know that AB, let me write this out. I know that AB is congruent to CD. And we did it nice and fat and chunky like. All right, two, constructing congruent angles. There's a few more steps, so follow along closely with me, students. All right, so this is our angle. This is angle A. We want to draw a congruent angle, I mean, a congruent angle that's congruent to angle A. Now, the first thing we're going to do is, once again, draw a ray. So, let's draw a ray, like so. Once again, make it a long one. And we'll have the end point called D. Does it matter what we call it? No, we're just going to call it D for now. The second place is to place the compass on point A and draw an arc that intersects the sides of angle A. So, check this out. We're going to take our, our compass, place it on A, like so, and then we're going to draw this line this arc, and it's going to intersect the two sides. See what I'm doing there? We're going to label these points of intersection B and C. So let's put a B. You write this in. We're going to put a B right here. All right. This is B, and this is C. Call them whatever you want. Those are just B and C for now. The next part is with the same compass setting. So keeping the same compass exactly the ways, we're going to put it on endpoint D. All right, we're going to move it over here. We're not changing how long it is. We're just moving it over. And what we're going to do is draw another arc. And it's going to intersect like that. We drew our arc. And this point, let's give it another name. We'll call it E. Sound good? Now, we've done this. Draw an arc and label the point of intersection E. Now, we're going to take our compass. Bring it back over here. All right, look at your paper. You should have the same thing drawn what you're going to draw is just not going to draw anything. You're just going to take your compass and open it to the same length as CD. Okay? So we're just going to move it and see how long this is using our compass. Okay? We're going to find out how long it is. So we can open it to the compass to the length of BC. Now with the same compass setting, so with the same distance, we're just going to move this over now that we got that distance over here. Okay? And we're going to draw, once again, a line. Oh, I don't like that. Let's do it in a nice blue shade. Okay? We're going, oh, and draw, nope. We're going to just draw a nice line. Okay? You see how they intersect over there? This point of intersection we'll call F. So let's just call this F. See how they intersect? Okay. Now this is a point. 
this is point where they intersect this F. Now, to make sure that these are congruent, what we're now going to do, our final step, is to take a ray and draw it once again through DF. All right, right there through DF. And if you look at that, holy smokes, don't these two angles look exactly the same? They sure do. So to write a quick congruent statement, I would say, now that I know these two are congruent, angle, angle C, A, B, is congruent to angle F, D, E. All right, our final thing is we're going to be constructing a perpendicular bisector. Now before we do this, let's look at this word, perpendicular and bisector. Now we know what bisector means. All right, let's take this word right here. We know a bisector is... Um, anything that cuts a line in half. To bisect is to cut in half, right? So cut in half. Now what does perpendicular mean? I don't think we've learned that one yet. So a perpendicular line or perpendicular lines are lines that form 90 degree angles. Well, what does that look like? You guys know a lot about perpendicular, I mean 90 degree angles by now, but let's take a look. Oh, what is going on that is not what I wanted to happen. Let's move this up again. What I wanted to happen was that to go away. All right, so it would look like this. Here and here, if you look, that's like a perfect L. That's 90 degree angles. Now an example, well, are these perpendicular? No, because they don't form 90 degree angles. So perpendicular lines form 90 degree angles. How did that turn into an angle? Okay. So what we're going to do is construct a perpendicular bisector of AB. Perpendicular bisector of line AB. Okay? Oh, all this editing. Live on the spot. You're seeing it as it goes on. So to create this perpendicular bisector, just follow along with the steps. All right? First, what we're going to do is take this compass and we're going to open it to the full length and what we're going to draw is a big old arc okay so once you open it to the full length you draw an arc around like this okay got it now what you're going to do is put this on the other side now okay flip around your compass put this on the point B open it to the same length again oh here we go sorry and open it the same whole thing again. Now what we're going to do is once again draw a really a big arc again, okay? We're going to take a big arc and just draw that like so, okay? Boom. Got it. Now oh, look at that. That's pretty. And let's zoom out a little to look at that. Now, we can put our compass away. We're done with it for now. Go away, compass. Now what we're going to do is label these two points of intersection of the arcs. So we have this arc right here. We're going to put a point here and a point here. And let's call those C, okay, and D. We got C and D right there. What we're going to do is take a line and connect C and D, all right? Right there, right through the middle. And what we've just created is a perpendicular bisector, meaning it goes right through the midpoint of AB and it's perpendicular, creating 90 degree angles. So to mark 90 degrees, we should probably put some squares in there, right? Because we know that's what 90 degrees is. So these angles are all 90 degree angles. Awesome, that's a perpendicular bisector. Now we're not done yet. We're gonna actually mark what we know to be true. So. Looking at this, since I know this is a perpendicular bisector, what I know is that this line cuts AB in half, meaning this is congruent to this. This midpoint we should probably give a name, let's call it E, okay? So we know AE is congruent to EB. Furthermore, I also know that this is actually congruent. So I know DE is congruent to CE. And finally, I know that all these angles are 90 degrees. And since they're all the same measure, they're also all congruent. So this is what I'm going to put. Here's what we know. We know that AE, AE is congruent 
to EB. All right. This segment is congruent to this segment. We also know DE is congruent to EC. All right. This segment is congruent to this segment. And also, you haven't seen the symbol yet. We know that AB is perpendicular to DC. All right. And what that line right mean there means perpendicular. All right. And that's it. So from now, first point forward, it's up to you to practice. Good luck. And remember, guys, drink lots of water, stay hydrated, and don't look a bull in the eyes. It really makes them angry.